YouTube. So here we go. I also going to record from uh, this local camera so I can make this uh, with high resolution later. I hope. Okay. Let's see if I can see myself. All right, today we're going to learn um, how to paint deer. Deer is a, a very common subject matter in Chinese brush painting in both landscape and the flower and the birds category. Um, so, to, you know, today is a, is, a, is a holiday weekend. Usually we'll go out and uh, uh, we often see deer crossing sign. <laughs> That's very common. Last time we did the duck crossing, right? This is very seasonal. Okay. Um, I think there are most of uh, your online students, returning students. That's great. Uh, we do have uh, one or two brand new uh, students. So I like to uh, start with a brief intro introduction of the material we're going to use today. Um, as always, I, I use the basics, uh, but you can also go very fancy uh, if you like. So if we cut the starter kit, you will have the three or five basic brushes. Uh, three basics are the, the, soft, the stiff, soft, uh, and uh, let me see, this, this three looks like that, something like this. And uh, on the soft side, we can go up to superwash. Um, and you can also add larger stiff hair. Like this one is uh, instantly the deer hair, deer hair brush. We call it deer wolf. Actually, wolf stands for uh, stiff hair. Deer is, uh, they look the same actually. Uh, the deer hair is supposed to be softer than weasel or uh, other wolf hair maybe. And we have something in between called a, a combination brush. It has soft and a stiff combination. Um, that's the most common use for animal painting to get furry effect and uh, to, um, to paint petals or that kind of uh, wash. Uh, for, for those stiff brush we use for outline and paint bony strokes, branches or, or uh, rocks in landscape, uh, trees, uh, so stiff hair brush. Oh, you don't see my hand, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> this is, uh, so uh, can I hear you, you guys? Let me see. I think I turned the volume down so I cannot really hear you. Oh, you don't see my hand, right? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, you can unmute yourself uh, if needed and ping my video uh, to make sure you, 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 you can uh, see my video constantly without interruption. Okay, uh, you can unmute yourself uh, if needed and ping my video. Uh, I think I'm, I'm hearing an echo. Let me, let me turn that echo off. Don't know where it's coming from. Okay, this one. Okay, no echo, right? No echo? Good. Okay, let me just repeat. We basically have stiff, soft, and uh, uh, combination. So let me just use large examples. So they come in small, uh, as small as this, small, stiff, with a brush or happy dot brush or basic wolf brush or landscape brush, that kind of. So these are all stiff. The brown ones, basically the brown ones are all stiff. Bamboo and orchid brush, these are all stiff. Let me see, I think I need to move that camera. Sorry. Yes. Now you can see the entire 
And the softer brush are these. Uh, some of them look like a softer, but actually they are combination brush. It has a stiff hair in, inside the soft, like this one, you can see, this is a wrist brush number two. Uh, it has uh, the same kind of combination brush. Okay, so uh, very common used brush is uh, this one for, especially for animal paintings, all right? Um, that's a brush and we need to have ink. It's the same ink that if you have taken uh, the class from uh, Victoria's uh, calligraphy lesson, we use the same ink. You can use bottled ink. And if you got to the starter kit, you can use this uh, convenient ink cake. So you, you basically just uh, soak the brush in water. So you need a water container. You can use any bottle, any, any, any container. Um, and then just brush off from this, uh, this ink cake. This is the convenient ink cake. Okay. Um, the color we're going to use. I got questions about the color from uh, uh, Charlene, right? Or, yeah, she asked if we can use uh, watercolor paper, uh, watercolor, uh, watercolor pigments, or watercolor pens. Yes, I, I, this is my watercolor pens. I, I can use them. Um, most of these are Holbein. And I also got some uh, Winsor Newton and uh, Daniel Smith. These are all good brands. The only difference from uh, uh, the Chinese uh, Maris color is the, that uh, you, it tends to bleed when you wet mount it. So as long as you don't wet mount or don't paint with uh, too, too much um, build up paints, you should be okay to you know, use a regular watercolor. Uh, instead of these, these are Maurice watercolor, they tend to dry uh, in the tubes. I just open the tube and then you know, put it in the in a, uh, palette. You use water to soak it before using. This, so they can this still be usable, but once they dry on paper, it's water uh, resistant more, because the binding material is called the gelatin instead of uh, gum arabia. This tends to um, bleed when you rewet it because you know when when you paint on watercolor paper, you spray water and then you can blot it off. That's uh, what it's designed for. So. We don't uh, normally use Western color if you want to wet mount it. Okay. Um, the the name for Chinese bra uh, Chinese paints are very uh, different than Western, but you just you know need to get used to. Uh, some of them are mineral colors like these, mineral opaque colors, uh, also vermilion. Some are amber. You know. Uh, you can tell if they're from vegetable, they call it indigo or gamboge, you know, this kind of uh, vegetable color are transparent. Uh, and some colors are semi-opaque, like, like an earth color, the, the uh, amber. And we also have uh, rouge and uh, a, a plant color and a uh, carmine, a kind of bug, maybe. Anyway, but they use, they use chemicals, I believe. They don't use any natural uh, materials uh, anymore. Um, the paper we're going to use are the absorbent paper. Let me just take a, like this. These are uh, single shine papers. You can see uh, it's very uh, absorbent. And you can also use semi-sized, uh, semi-absorbent paper. Uh, if you got the student pack, you, you can see both kinds. Um, Semi-absorbent paper could be good for semi-spontaneous or boneless style. Oh, we'll talk about it later. But uh, uh, for spontaneous style, we use uh, this kind of paper. Uh, it's very, very absorbent and uh, 
you can see if, you, if the brush is dry, you, you can also get a nice dry effect. So let, I'll talk about uh, uh, the tonalities next with uh, uh, this kind of paper. And we usually excuse me, use a brush rest. You don't need that many, maybe uh, just a few. Just say it like this. Uh, so they were not rolling on your table. Use the dear one. This one. Oh, this is the dear one. Yeah, that's the one I'm. So um, let me get some uh, pen paper if I can find. Just, uh, just use a new one. Uh, incidentally, we have uh, another kind of paper in the starter kit. It's called a mulberry paper. That's good for landscape. Okay. And uh, the paper we use is a rice paper for today, uh, this, uh, this lesson, because we want to show the tonality uh, of the ink the best. And uh, let me start from uh, this uh, uh, light ink, like tone. You just use water and see just the, re the ink I got from that little just a little touch or just a dip, dip a little bit, a tiny little bit goes a long way. So this is a gray tone. It could be very gray, like 2%, uh, maybe you know, up to like 10%, maybe. So it's still light gray. So you can load the, the whole brush with this if you paint uh, a large area. So let me just show you. So this, this is light, light ink, right? And you can also have uh, uh, dark ink without blending. You can just, uh, or you can use a little bit blending still. We, we usually save the darkest for spot like a nose, uh, eye on the animal head, and on the limbs, on the, the legs, you use uh, like this, this is a called uh, dark or medium dark ink. Okay. Let's see. Let me get the camera on angle a little bit higher. I was struggle with the to set up, so I almost set up with my cell phone connection. So everything is kind of disorganized a little bit. Okay. Um, and notice that uh, the way I hold the brush, if you are a first time user or is even your um, advanced student, uh, you may still need to, to practice this. Um, we, we hold the brush basically like a calligraphy, um, calligrapher does. So you grip the brush like, like this first with the two, uh, your thumb and the index finger. And then pull the brush back with your middle finger and then resist from inside with your ring finger. The advantage of this is that you can hold the brush straight instead of it, you know, like this, right? Like a pencil. So you can, you can hold it straight. And when needed, you just move your middle finger a little bit, and you can change side. You can adjust the angle of the brush easily. And even doing a long um, movement, you know, a, a long a line, you can, you can twist the brush uh, to change, to adjust the angle. Um, there are two basic kinds of uh, stroke. I'm going to talk about, and I will refer to it. I also already used the terminology on my um, handout. Let me ping myself. So 
viewer can see larger picture of me. Okay. <clears throat> so when you hold the brush straight, we call this vertical or horizontally, we call this tip concealed stroke, academic term, the tip, tip concealed or tip centered. Tip centered means uh, you keep the tip in the middle of the line and draw usually from left to right or from top down, just like you do calligraphy. And uh, notice that uh, um, the tip is concealed. So we call that tip concealed and centered stroke. To make it short, just straight stroke. When I say straight stroke, that means hold the brush straight or perpendicular to the paper like that. And you can draw with the tip of the brush like a very sharp, very, very narrow like this. Okay. And you can draw uh, a circle with your wrist, you know, like that. This is all tip centered. You can draw any shape with, this is line drawing, the linear stroke or line drawing like for contours, for, um, but you can also make it uh, uh, into a shape, a shape like a bone or a, a, a section of leg, you know, um, we'll use that on the, on the bird, uh, on the uh, uh, deer's uh, uh, legs. This is called, uh, in Chinese, zhong feng, feng means uh, stroke or tip, brush tip. Zhong means uh, in the middle, middle or centered. So this tip centered stroke, okay? <clears throat> Usually uh, the, the uh, line is even colored, but if you have a gradation, you might see some, um, some tonal change over time. So in the beginning, you may have dark, and then in the end, you may have light, like this, uh, this little stroke, you can see that, but not very emphasized on the tonality change. Um, the, another type is like you see here almost. Uh, so let me show you is what we call the uh, side brush stroke or bian feng in Chinese. This means you hold the brush like, like uh, at an angle, like an angle. Okay, let me see if you can see my picture. Yeah. So side brush strokes is like that. And you can combine several strokes to do a large shape. So this usually used to do flower petals or just um, paint the, the shape, the mass of a object, like the body of the animal. Um, normally with uh, plenty of ink, so we, we almost call it we call this kind of technique like a splashing ink if you use uh, you know, a lot of ink. Um, and you can see that uh, you could have just single tone like light. Even you with this monotone like uh, just gray. When you overlap, you will see some um, um, difference, yeah. Just you know, still it's not easy to really to get a, a very even tone, not necessary because we always uh, have multiple shades or tone or values. That they refers to the darkness of the, uh, the stroke, right? So stroke and the tonality actually uh, is, is a, uh, uh, one, uh, process, you know, you deliver the tonality with a certain st stroke. Um, so slant, slant, slant stroke like that. Um, actually, I would like to emphasize this characteristic of this kind of stroke, okay? 
if we if we put uh, some dark to the tip, so we have a uh, multiple loads from dark to light. You know, like multiple grades or gradation, gradation. Okay, and this kind of stroke usually give you one side um, smooth and one side we can call that uh, hard edge in, in Western term, hard edge and soft edge. So this tip along one side give you hard edge and this gives you a soft edge. If you, especially when you load just the water, we can use a spring like a chopper, you put the water without reloading the clean the brush, I can use that. So you can see one side is hard, one side is uh, uh, soft. Like if you put uh, one stroke for the uh, neck of the deer, so this upper side is sharper, right? Harder. This front side, just the side is lighter. So that's the characteristic of a side brush stroke. So you need to identify them when you see the, the sample painting and you, you will know how to hold the brush and how to load the brush and how to um, recreate the effect of uh, this kind of, uh, th this is called BM from, BM means a side, side brush sides uh, tip, tip sided, tip um, on one side, side brush stroke. That's usually people just call it side brush, use the side of the brush. So um, in calligraphy, um, we, we rarely use this kind of, uh, this much is, you know, slant, you, you might slant up to one third, but not the entire brush. But in painting, we, we use we can use up to eighty percent maybe of the the brush side. So if you cannot cover the uh, cover the area, you need to use larger brushes. So you can cover even larger areas of the of the uh, paper. So this is uh, um, two basic strokes. And uh, there are some var variations, very important variation on uh, uh, techniques I'm going to talk about. One is like you see, I mentioned uh, uh, from left to right or from top down. Um, this is uh, called uh, uh, pouring, pour, pouring, pouring like this, you know. You can slant the, the brush. The Henry? What? No. What? We can't hear. You cannot hear me? Can you hear now, me now? Now we can. But, okay, let but me we... mute everybody else. Maybe that's the problem. Let me see if I... oh, I'm sorry. We didn't hear what you were saying about that last stroke. Oh, okay. I will repeat that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> the the two kind two different directions create uh, one. Um, this is a smooth flow flowing. Like if you water, you want to use pouring. Um, but in some when you when you paint something like the rock, you want to use the brush against against the direction. You know, you put the tip in front of the movement.
We lost you again. It's probably internet problems. Henry, are you talking? Are we supposed to be hearing you? I can see you, but I can't hear anything. I can't I, see him. Oh, I can see him. It just moved uh, like he's one of the participants. It moved further down the line. So I just scrolled down to look at this and I saw wow. his I saw him there, but I don't have hmm. any, I don't have any audio. Yeah, I have no Henry and no audio. Oh. I don't have any audio. No, Henry, no audio. Yeah. <laughs> he's showing us a card, but we're not hearing anything he's saying. Oh. Well, and I'm not, we're not, some of us aren't seeing it. I wonder if one of us should call him. Not hearing or seeing. Something's wrong with his audio, that's for sure. You need to pin his video to see the picture. Right, but I can't get can't it. Hear it? We still can't hear it. Yeah, just go down through the participants. Eventually, you'll see him, but you won't hear him. Okay, I'm. I don't have him. A scroll where you can look at the. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, he's showing us something, but I don't know how we get a hold of him to let him know we're not hearing any of it. Does anybody have a cell? Um, yeah, I don't have his number. Do you have his number? No. <laughs> um, 
Um, I don't know that I've got a phone number for him. Well, I'll look up Lou here in our chat about. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've got an 866 number. Is that okay? Okay. It's 1-866-534-1111. Okay. Can anyone else see? I can see him now. I can't hear him. I can only see all of you. I He's can only see him the Henry, same here. we can't hear you. Henry, I'll see you. <laughs> we can't see hear you. you. Try scrolling your screen to the right. You might see him there because there's more than one page. Yeah, he's well, in the I see him, but I don't, and I see the pictures, but I don't hear him. Right. None of us do. Yeah, I don't hear him either, but if you don't see him, it might be on another screen. I tried the number and it just went to the recording. Right. Oh. And if we had a, he's got his cell phone with him, but I don't have his cell phone number. I'll see if I have it. Okay. Oh. Hold on. Because I think his cell phone is sitting there with them. Yeah, if we could text him. Right. He needs to give us his number so we can text him and let him know that his internet connection is stable. I don't think it, I think right. it's on his then. I He's can see him at the desk on one of the gallery pictures. Joe's got a sign up. Maybe we should all hold the sign up. Yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> That's a good I'm idea. I'm calling his cell phone. Okay. I'm, if not, I'll call the store. Well, she, somebody already tried that. Yeah, it just went to recording. He must not be able to see our chat. Yeah. Because we're all saying that. Henry, this is Charlene, and none of us can hear you. We cannot hear you on the, the video or audio. We can now see the pictures, but we can't hear. I think he's probably doing, he's moving something around, so. Well, maybe he's trying. Yeah, he still doesn't know we can't, yeah. we don't know what's can going you, on. Can you read my note? We can't hear you? <laughs> Only kind of. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> if it was... Yep. Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> you gotta write it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> you should have asked. There we go. <laughs> you all hold up a sign that says we can't hear you. Surely he'll look up and see us. Eventually, uh, maybe. Henry, it's Charlene, and none of us can. Henry, it's Charlene. None of us can hear you. Uh, go back to when you put up the card originally because we haven't heard anything <laughs> since then. Okay, bye-bye. So you got him? No. Oh. Well, we'll go back up to the sign. <laughs> right. Okay.
I'm making one myself. I don't see him moving right now. Maybe he's trying to fix it. Oh. I can't <laughs> write backwards. <laughs> Flip your rice paper. Oh, here we go. Ah. Uh. Would he be able to read it? I don't know. Yeah. And yep. Henry, we can't hear you. Siri's connecting to audio now. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Right. You need right. to give us a way to tell you when the sound cuts out because we have no way of getting to you. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that's a, I, I forgot to join audio. There's an option I didn't check. So um, let me repeat this uh, image first. Uh, this is the image, um, I, you know, the master Chen Xiongli. He is a uh, local artist. Actually, he spent uh, about 15 years in LA, but uh, he is now reached age 81, I think. He had a show last year. Um, he is a second generation uh, disciple of Qi Bai Shi. Uh, his teacher is Li Ku Chan. I think he, in very early age, also met Qi Bai Shi himself. Um, he was one of the youngest uh, member of the uh, artist association uh, uh, founded by Qi Bai Shi in Beijing. And this was signed by him uh, the year of uh, 1998, I met in LA in the Buddhist temple where he had a show of the uh, deers and he did a demo, I think I, I, I watched him. And so uh, by that time I started to learn this and I had three or four videos on YouTube. You can still find that I learned after him. Um, so my, from my early uh, I, I started to, to, to uh, follow him. And this book is uh, uh, not written by him, but uh, in a similar style, I think. So, uh, but it, I, I, yeah, I tried to combine the master's uh, paintings I, I got uh, on the internet and this uh, on, uh, basic uh, book. So this, this page I already translated in the handout. It shows different uh, uh, gesture, the, the neck movement actually. Like we paint the birds, remember? We do the, the body first and then we can uh, change, we can still change the, the head and the neck or you can do a sitting, resting posture body like this and then uh, change the direction of the head. Uh, that's very helpful, that's why. And let me show you how to do the deer uh, head. First, so we use a small, um, smaller brush, not the small brush. With Henry, the, one yeah. question: What type of paper are you using? I'm using the unsized, the single shrine. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the paper that this artist, uh, all the artists used, because they 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 um, record the brush movement the best. Let me just check to see if you can see me. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, or it's okay that you can just see me. Just do this. Is this big enough? This way you can see my sample, also my stroke. Right? I'm going to do this uh, sequence. So start. If you use ink cake, actually, it's easier to control the amount because you cannot really get too much. Uh, so I dilute the ink with water to get the dark gray, but not not too dark, I'd say. Um, maybe mid mid uh, mid tone. So you, you do a ear like that. Actually, I'm using this semi size one. I didn't realize that. But that's good. Um, okay, accidentally, I, I just picked the semi size shot. You can see it does not smear. <laughs> but this for this diagram, is, it doesn't matter, okay? So I can do slower. I can repeat, you know, it's impossible if it's a size shot. 
you can see this is almost like going to be painting. You can, you can fake it. This is the uh, number one stroke. And number two, you cover the, the front forehead, the, the front um, of the, 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 the head. Okay. And then um, I think if you, if you, you know, if you didn't reload, I guess I did reload it, it become darker. I should have uh, done this in one continuous movement. So you get lighter and lighter, right? So, so that's the back ear. So one, two, three. It should be dark, lighter, and then light, lighter. Something like that. And then uh, reload a little bit dark and use the side of the brush like this, or you can uh, hold the brush straight. I think in this example, it just use a uh, straight brush to define the neck and then light the ink, just you know, touch a little water and then add um, a little, um, I think you can leave a brick there, the nose, between the nose and the, this forehead stroke, and then uh, maybe a muzzle. This is the muzzle, right? And uh, the mouth. It's a very small protruded muzzle, and this is in light ink. Okay, and then uh, just draw the jar under the, it's like a triangle shape, triangular shape. This is the, yeah, this is, this is forms a triangle, right? And then um, define the front and just use maybe a little more water to, to blur this, this line a little bit, or you can just, you know, add a few strokes. The point is you don't want to really make it realistic. So just you know, leave the strokes. It's just one, two, you know, one, two, three. They're like a Z, like, like that would be fine. Along that, that top, that neck line, the back um, of the neck. So and keep some white in the, in the four, uh, what called the, the chest side. Okay, the underside. And then uh, I would use uh, maybe a different brush just for the small details. So we can use a small whistle brush and wet it first and then dry it with a paper towel or a scrap paper. And then uh, use pure ink, no, no, no dilution, no adding any water, just dot the eye. It's about there with the eyebrows eyebrow, and then the nose will be just you know, a little dark. And you can, you can enhance this uh, line if it's not dark enough. That's called breaking ink, or uh, uh, dried into it. Okay, so you can also put some uh, um, dark on the ear. Um, so this is the head of a male or a foreign, you know, without the anterior. Um, for, with the male, let me do another one. So start from the light again. So this is semi-sized Sean. If you have semi-sized Sean, you can also use this because so this is this is just a study of the the. Uh, uh, Structure. Okay, one stroke for the front ear or the left ear, and then I think we, we might not see this. Move this up a little bit. Let me just check. Okay. So I'm going to do this, uh, this page right here. Um, and then add 
add a forehead like that. And you can see I use side stroke, but uh, my um, hard lines on the law side and just give this rough inside. So it's like a side stroke. Right? And then you can do it like a half um, ears behind because the anterior may, may hide that a little bit. And then you can continue with the, uh, you don't have to do neck next, but you can just, uh, if the, the uh, ink is correct, just do another, uh, you know, a dot kicking back on the, on the nose like that. And then uh, draw the muscle, the, the, the mouth, and uh, draw the jar like that. Okay, and then uh, the neck. It's pretty thick, actually. And you can, you can just use the light ink to start. You can do the shading first, especially on this paper. It will be interesting to use uh, what we call the um, in wet into wet, right? To create a, because it, this this paper does not smear, does not absorb. So just like watercolor, you can you can do wet into wet. You can even shade a little bit there, and just like a, um, I I think we mentioned the three kind of stroke in the beginning, um, but I didn't mention. I think we almost get there. It's the pushing stroke could, could go, you can push the brush on, on the palette and make it split. So you, then you can, you can use the split brush. So this is the, the split brush. So instead of pouring, pushing, there's a split brush technique. Sometimes uh, it's useful for painting furs. So um, yeah, you, you can use that as well if you need. And now I, I define the, the eye. The, the, the eye of the, the uh, deer is very soulful, very big, soulful, so like with a lot of, um, it's very kind of, kind, kind of you know, eye, very rounded, very nice looking. This author like to do it like a girl's makeup. That's fine. That's up to. And there is, could be also some uh, some marks on the forehead like that. And then um, you, you can use a stiff brush to do the horns or um, the atlas, right? Enter, enters, enters. So let's wet to the brush, and then you can see the um, back. Is lighter the dark, uh, the front. There are two sides of the, the antlers. Right? The front is darker. Let's see, it's still recording. Good, right? <clears throat> so if, if you um, do the dark, usually I do the front first. Um, so let's do a short one like that. It's not dark enough. Because this paper does not smear that affect the tonality as also you can you can draw you know some uh, this is so it's all you know always um, there must, there's always accident that like uh, and you don't have to uh, control it you just go along with that so the the shape of the antler is like a um, w, I will say on this end. This brush is too dry. W. Um, okay. Something like that. And this is dark. And then uh, diluted. This water, and then draw the other side. It could be like that. Another W. Okay, and uh, you can highlight the tip of the 
here. And the notes. Start the notes. Okay. That's the, the head. Um, I think this kind of paper, you can see, you have more control, but it, um, therefore it's a completely different uh, painting um, manner. There's no happy accident. You know, you, you have to just do it in a procedure, maybe from light to dark, it's gradually uh, get the effect you want. You can you can blot it. You can you know you can blot it. See, that's how easy it is to change something like that. So this paper has a lot of control, but uh, I really um, don't like, really like it. <laughs> um, um, okay, actually, I don't know where I put the single shirt, but here is another kind of uh, paper that you can use, especially good for you if you are beginners. Um, this is called double shrine. It's a Unsized double shrine. It's thicker. It may be triple. I mean, Maybe triple. Triple or double. Yeah, let me see. Sometimes uh, the, you cannot really tell until you try it. Um, this paper is, is like a uh, double weight of the single. So it gives you more uh, time. When you paint, you can go slower. It give you more time. It's not really uh, non-absorbent, but just absorb more, so you can do it slower. Feels like less smearing. Okay, so when you do a side view of uh, the deer, we, we start from the back. Remember the diagram we did? We can still change the direction of the head later. If you like. So they always, uh, we always start from the, the stable part of the body. And uh, um, the shoulder is darkest. Thank okay. you. What, what paper are you using? Is that the double. mulberry? It's double or triple. Uh, I assume it's double. Double, um, double, double, right, uh, Sean. It, oh. X, U, yeah. Okay, um, so I use side brush stroke. Just um, side. Okay, and you can go up, down, or I just feel like this would work. So, so remember that the sharp is on the sharp side is on the tip. So I, I keep kind of tip on along the top side and give me a soft edge on the on the uh, bottom part. Especially this belly, you can see it's very soft. And then if I double load it more, you can. See something like that, you know, some, some uh, hard edge are also darker. And actually, I'm using breaking ink technique right away because uh, I, can, I can add a different tone when it's still wet, so it's wet into wet. Uh, it, it, it also starts to create something uh, like a feather, oh, not feather, furry, <laughs> furry effect. Okay. Um, so this is a double shine, I think. It's pretty uh, sure. Let me get some more ink. Because double shine eats a lot of ink. It absorbs too much sometimes, I think. And uh, let me do another uh, body so you can see the sequence. Okay. Um, I would use dark gray, not darkest, because we want to save the darkest to, to, to the eye. So it's like a little bit bent here. So this is a joint, the, the, the shoulder blade, uh, and then start to bend uh, to the, what we call the upper limb. Uh, and then uh, keep, you can, you can um, just keep it the same, just like we did the, the shrimp, Body, remember the continued but overlapping strokes. 
without lifting, just finish the whole blood of the, the body, and then uh, we'll continue this uh, other part. And uh, I try to get the lower part, the lower part soft. So try to, one more time, see. And uh, there is a slant on, on the four uh, shoulder, also a slant near the hip here. Okay. Let me just do it here. And you can, you can draw like that too, and then do the slant. And here is another slant indicates the um, thigh starts to show that. And the belly part could be soft. I think that's. I I think these are all accidental. So you can see each time is different, but they will be all good, I'm sure, because I double loaded the brush. They're not even. It has all the gradation, and sometimes uh, I can have darker, and I touch a little bit water without the dilute, so it, it, it will not give me a very stiff start, uh, stiff edge. One more time. See if you can see. Okay, good. Um, let me do it here. Maybe. And horizontal for the um, back line, and then this stroke. I can even leave some white in between. It doesn't matter, you know. And if you have ink, you can continue to the neck already, but I don't uh, have enough ink. This is a deer hair brush. It's a very good brushable pen in deer. Um, okay, let me uh, continue with uh, let me another one. This, this is the, actually is a, is a fun part, not very difficult. Just one, two, three, kind of pull to the back, and then uh, add maybe one more shot, and then use the very bottom to finish something like that. You can you can repeat a little bit. So my brush, just one stroke, create all the gradations I I I, I expect. It's it's not really something I can uh, totally expect control, but it, uh, it's something like that. And then um, you go back to the previous page where we did the, the head, remember this this page, right? So start from the, the front ear, and then the foreground to the back ear, and then the, the neck line. This could be darker. And the, uh, let's finish the mouth. You can use the light. You can use different brush for different tones. Let me, let me see if I can do this. Uh, let's just use a smaller brush because sometimes uh, it's easier for you to control. So that, let's keep a light, light brush for this. Let's draw this nose with the light ink first. Then we break that. We can just draw something like that, something like this. Okay. And then uh, let's just use uh, the smallest, uh, the, you know, like a detail brush for the eye, okay? And you can also draw a little mark. If, you, if it's too light, I don't want to repeat. I just draw some lines like a eyebrow or uh, this stripey stripe on, you know, on the front. Okay, let's do this again. The, the ear front, you can have it a little pointed, more realistic, it doesn't matter. I mean, just, uh, this is side view, so not uh, showing much. And then a suggestive um, stroke for the, the other ear. And then add a little dark to do the neckline, connect to the body. Uh, it's like a C shape, curve, and then a uh, little kick back there. Oh, I 
I forgot to use this brush. This is a smaller brush. And then this is the mouth and the, the jar. Okay, then the neck. And you can extend that a little bit with uh, some uh, dry brushing, but it was light. Just soften that neck a little bit and then go back to the uh, small brush to define the, the eye. Oh, another um, feature of the uh, deer is that uh, the short tail, sometimes it's white, you know, the white tail, it's very short. So uh, you can just, just do something like that. And they don't really show the white in this angle. But, uh, if we do another perspective, you will see. Um, so this is the body and the and the head. Uh, do I have room for the neck? Maybe I still have room. Let's do that. So the next I will use, uh, uh, go back to this stiff brush. You can use the basic uh, wolf hair stiff brush to do the, the, the leg. Uh, we use a little bit darker, a little bit darker, uh, like this dark, I think. Not too wet, so you can control the, the brush stroke. Ah, those two pages, uh, three, I think. Okay, now we use straight, straight brush stroke. Straight, hold the brush straight. Um, let's do this leg first. In the beginning, you might have still have to slant. You, you, you know, you start from, uh, let's say, repeat this and then pull. Just go to the right and then lift the brush, hence the joint, change direction to the front. So this is the direction here, this, this, and this angle. Don't make it uh, wrong. And then the other leg, you could, you can um, make it easy. Just, uh, just stop a little bit, you know. But it bends. Um, it should bend forward. But uh, in painting, we, 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 in this angle, maybe we don't really see that. It, sh it, it should bend both to to the front like that. Okay, and then this foreleg is straight down, very th uh, thin, very, very sl slim, bony. And uh, you can add either uh, the other side here or, or to in the front. You know, just depends on the perspective. And the, the, the foot, the hoof is very, Difficult part actually for me. I tend to pin all my animal feet too large. Um, let me try. It split uh, just like a two strokes, like that, and then there's a little. Let's see. So there's curve uh, cut out in between the hoof and. The if, if you see it from the front, it's something like that. But you don't have, really have to, you can leave some space, just be suggestive. So one, two. There's, there's a curve in the front. Just be suggestive. Look at the handout to, to, for details if you cannot see my detail. Um, this is something suggested. Okay. That's the side view. This should be the tail. Any questions so far? Well, hmm. I used the uh, double shot. Let me see if I still can find the. <clears throat> may, may I ask a question, Henry? Uh -huh. um, well, I'm not very successful at all with my deer, but 
how do you get the correct perspective of like the front leg and the back leg in relationship mm -hmm. to, okay. you know what? I'm not sure how to ask the question, but mine. But, yeah, I, that, yeah, that has to do with the join. Let me show you the homework I did. Um, okay. Did, uh, I, when I read this book, um, I also read another book by a Western painter. Uh, this is the book I I studied. So um, yeah, it's a how to draw animals. From this book, I learned this. So let me see if you can see my. Can you see the, my sketchbook here? Yes. Yeah. And so basically, the body is a rectangular, roughly about. Uh, yes. Roughly about uh, uh, two squares, you know. Sorry. So, the 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 width and the height is about uh, uh, one to two, you know, the height you know, and the width, and then the and then you draw a, a like rectangular a slant, rectangular parallel. This one and one parallel to each other. And then you draw this uh, two, number two rect rectangular goes uh, uh, under it, slant the back ways. But this one in the front, it, within the body cage, the, the chest cage. And then this one, the joint is right there under the belly. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the, this, the two sections bend forward here and then the hoof. This uh, front is straight down. I think the proportion, this, if the, the standing is like, uh, I think it's, uh, I don't know how much, I didn't measure it. Uh, I just trust my <laughs> eye something to look at it right. It's pretty long, very leggy, especially the, the young deer, the, the form. Um, and then the, the neck is another tri triangular than the box for the head and then a little for the muzzle and the very short tail. That's the basic uh, proportion you, you, you can practice. I, I, I can draw this if you want, but this is really uh, what we uh, call this drawing. Uh, you know, I, I, I did the comparison with dog. You can also um, compare with something you have learned like a horse, you know. Uh, the same, same box could be applied to different animals. So this 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 is what this book uh, is like the pig, and this is the okay. I use this approach try to analyze the picture found in in my Chinese painting book. So I try to draw the box from that uh, front page. You know, I, I scanned for you um, to see if it works for me. I found it's not very easy to draw this kind of uh, uh, gesture. The side view is, is really easy. So, so we stay with the side view today. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you can see the, the deal, uh, just the basic of, um, box, like, a, I, like I said, about a two square. And then you put a box right here. There's, there's a slant there, and there's a slant in the front that and the protrusion, uh, like it's, uh, what is called spatula. Yeah, then the shoulder. So this is this is two parallels. Um, so I, I don't know how to uh, measure the, the proportion. Maybe uh, this could be wrong. You know, it could be a little taller. I think. So the height could be a little taller. Yeah. Uh, so you need a lot of drawing practice. But if you're not sure, the best way to do it is just trace it. Um, use a pencil. Um, you can print it out and then trace it. Just for, you know, for stroke practice, um, yeah, you, you, can, you can just draw with a charcoal. Let me show you how to do that with a charcoal. So you don't get lost when you paint with a brush. The soft willow charcoal. Let me see this. I got it here. I use soft little charcoal. 
um, let me okay now let me let me do this one the back view one then we will do a combination okay so let's say we do so this time I'll start from the drawing and you can use pencil but you put the paper on the hard the table without the felt uh, when you draw it, so it will not break the paper. Okay. And the, so for this practice, I, I, I just grab any piece of paper. This is a semi size trim. Um, I just draw this. So for this one, I would use that, that technique. You know, you just draw a, a slant um, box. And then, because it's a little bit, uh, in a, you know, you give a little thickness. It's not very thick. The body is very kind of uh, flat. And then you draw this box. Uh, this one, and then this one, yeah. and then uh, this, something like that. So just use straight lines, you know. Okay, so, hit it up there. The shoulder is this same direction as this, this parallel, and this, parallel and then straight. The front leg is a straight. Okay. I really don't like to study enough autonomy, but you know, for me just four legs, that's all I need. The name of those are not really important. Then the draw a little box and then the muscle and make it like triangular shape. The neck to be taller, I think. That's uh, well, here it goes up. Okay, that's uh, that's how it is. And you can you can dust it off if something wrong. You know you can use a piece of a paper towel or I used to uh, I used to have a tool and I just a piece of silk on a stick that is used. And then I just use the, uh, um, when I have this kind of thing, you know, you can start from the, anywhere, you know, because you already have a joint. Um, you can start from the neck. And then go ahead to something like that. This paper does not smear, so to fake it. And then, Okay, the the book tells you to start from here. The um, the body, the, the tail part, the what's it called the hip. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Hope they can't hear me. <laughs> Someone uh, needs to mute yourself <laughs> before you have intimate talk. Okay. Um, I'm going to extend the leg so you can do a little tail there. And uh, just hold the brush straight. You can draw this like a calligraphy. Okay, then this foreleg just straight. There's a hint of joint, like a very tall. Not in the halfway, just near the top. I think pretty much near the, the upper uh, upper belly. And then you can draw the belly, the white belly. And then this white tail, I think. Something like that. And uh, just go back to the... The nose should be small. Okay, it should be small. This can be blocked away. This paper, you can you can blot it. See, I can blot it, but not totally erase it. Though, still, okay. Then just add 
dot to the i. Or do, this is a male, so do the atlas antler, antler. Um, this is a very interesting angle. Just the, this, this is a foreshortened front, and then light for the back. Okay. Bigger behind. That's interesting. W. But there's a. Uh, okay. <laughs> Here it should be there. Right. I think I messed up. Uh, the ear, I saw it was uh, behind. It's, 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 um, rest it. Yeah. Uh, lift it. Okay, so just touch the, the nose. And then the eye, the darker, darker, darker. You can repeat that. <laughs> then that's it. You can repeat the some strokes just make it clear it's in the front darker and you can enhance it so you can still change it you know this is semi size that's why i think the uh, it's easier for beginners uh, included in the starter kit uh, it's not very similar um, so yeah you, if you start with a join correctly it's uh, much easier then you paint directly. But after you practice this many pages, you know, last night I, I spent two hours listening to why I'm listening to a lecture on uh, digital art <laughs> education of my friends, you know, in, in Central Academy at a lecture last night. So I, during his lecture, I taken some notes irrelevant to this. But interesting, you know, he said, art is the tree of life, science is the tree of the death. The quote by William Black. Do you know him? A um, Renaissance um, artist, but he is kind of anti modernism. He, he doesn't trust science. So I really like this quote, and I think um, we should be, you know, we should trust our artistic brand. So I, I put notes, uh, left brand uh, or right brand um, difference. You know, you don't have to give up science, but uh, uh, just to combine East and West or your, your two sides of the brand when you, when you paint. Uh, because it, a, a good stroke in painting has its own vitality or uh, aesthetics, you know, value. You, uh, the, the stroke itself is, is uh, um, it has life because you give, you give them from your, your energy, your chi, you know, it has the chi. So, um, yeah, here's uh, my drawing when I did this page, he, he was talking about the fractal uh, graphics. And uh, saying, you know, the Western artists rely on observation of natural because this, you know, irregularity of trees. In, in computer language, they call those uh, uh, noise, you know, to make something um, irregular. You know, William Black has a famous painting and, uh, of Newton, Newton, right, the scientist. He's drawing something very graphic while he's sitting on a on a rock with a very rich texture. But you call, can you make uh, something very uh, uh, mathematic out of uh, something irregular uh, or chaos, you know? So basically uh, the emergency, what they call is in computer language, describe that kind of accident. We call it happy accident. That creates the beauty of uh, trees, rocks, er er everything, clouds, you know? To make it irregular, fractured. I don't know if you understand <laughs> my, because I was a, a graphic designer. I used fractal painter, fractal, um, yeah. and now is the time uh, for gaming. So everything's digital. 
you don't use a brush anymore. Uh, this is uh, on the you know drawing I've done. So if you have time, you know you can draw um, to practice more, then your painting will improve. So basically, that's how you um, develop the proportion question. Okay. So, but in the beginning, you can. Um, you can use tracing technique, you know, just uh, um, draw before you paint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Do, yeah, thank you. Let me do a whole painting. So I'll start from uh, uh, <clears throat> the drawing. So you can follow me, okay? Uh, we use the, the reference to combine this uh, f four quarter, um, three, three quarter back view and uh, the uh, the side view, a male and a female. Does it look too difficult? <laughs> well, we haven't done this front view one. Let, let, let's do this one, maybe. Then we can try to compose something. So we have another uh, perspective. This one's the front view. I think it's very cute for painting um, the, the form, the young deer. That's, that's very cute. You can add it to the site, maybe make it a family. Okay, let me do this. Let's see if I have room for this. Maybe I just paint on the side of this one. Okay. <clears throat> so to do this front view, uh, you you start from the ear. Ah, actually, he start from the middle of the, the forehead. That's okay. I think. Uh, like, like we write Chinese characters, we start from the, the center and then the sides. When you have a character like this, you know, you start from the center. Um, yeah, that, that's good. And then um, try not to make the two ears symmetrical. So one bigger, you know, one smaller, uh, narrower, that, something like that. And then you dot dot the, the nose with a, uh, something in between. You, you can have a little kind of directional, uh, uh, okay, what do you call the dry stroke, you know, to connect them if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, as long as it's not too far, not too near, that's, that's the, the point. So this, uh, this is the shape of the head, okay? And then uh, you can dot the eye right away if you want. Or you can leave it to last. I usually like to dot it first. So I can see this uh, spirit. And you can see the three, uh, and, uh, in a, from, actually the whole, whole thing is in the triangle. You see, from here, from this to, to here, and also this two for in the between of the triangle, a small triangle is the nose. Okay, then I would change to uh, light, light ink, lighter ink. Just draw the chest, cheek, the cheek, and the little suggestion of the lip. Okay, that's it. Can you see it? Can you show you? Oops, that's the sample. Okay, can you see it? All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to do the neck. Um, you can draw the back. Oh, uh, since I got the light, I just draw the in the front. You know, with little little suggestion, something like that. Just the. Uh, Suggestion: Leave some blank between the uh, the mouth and, and the you know the neck, just, just like that. And you can add a little dark to define that the back of the neck. You don't have to touch the the head. I should. You can leave a little space there. Otherwise, it might lose. Okay, and this is a, a semi-sized shot, so, so I can go slower, no problem. You don't have to worry about uh, 
uh, smearing. So uh, then the, the chest, okay, and then you do the back uh, for the, the, you know, the, the back from up down like that. This, this paper does not smear, so it tends to be lighter than the other one. Okay. And then you can draw like half circles and for the hip. Okay, now the front leg, I think I'll do this one first. Uh, just go straight, take it easy. Uh, let me just make it easy for you. And you can, you can have a pulse in, in between. The, the joint is, um, yeah, pretty obvious, but uh, we just make a little pulse. You can have some break, uh, some uh, absence of stroke. You, know, you don't have to outline it. It's just, if you could do the, the shape in one stroke, that's fine. And then just uh, continue this way. It's pretty leggy with the form, okay, form uh, the young, young deer. And this fourth leg is kind of tricky. It's behind this middle one. So just the hint of that. The, the split uh, hoof, right? And just make sure the the gravity is right, so you need to. Um, this this is a ground. Yeah, this could be longer, a little longer, but should be level. This this is the the rear leg should not be lower than the front leg, right? Please, this is, just make this two behind, and a different plan. Okay, different uh, distance. You can enhance the eye and the nose. That's a, okay, don't forget a hint of a short tail. Not like a horse with long tail. It's a deer, head, deer tail is very short. Okay, that's my form. Form. Okay. And you can see this paper tends to flat out, just like a watercolor. It will not really keep the gradation as the raw paper or the unsized paper. Let me get the. I got some interesting paper. They're, they're very uh, similar to the unsized uh, single gem, but they have little, little uh, speckling on it. So let me just use this. It's basically single shine with a, a silver flakes, what they call silver flakes. Oh, my internet seems uh, restored. Okay, that's that's good news. So let me try to go back to the uh, normal. Okay, let me see if I can connect back to normal camera. Okay, I'm back. Okay, let me see. Can you hear me? Okay, let me get rid of this one. Uh, I have to leave.
Hello, hello, I'm back to normal. Let me see. Okay, I'm cutting this paper for the next demo. I'm using the um, unsized single shun, but with uh, some golden, or actually gold, uh, silver flakes. You won't really see it uh, on the camera, maybe. It's basically a single, single unsized shun or um, absorbent paper. So let me get some room here. <clears throat> so uh, I would do this demo uh, for two deers, just groove them together and just show you how to um, create the depths with uh, different tonalities. So we got some, uh, some uh, dark gray to start with. Um, let me draw this so you can see how do I control and just draw the box like we did. Draw a big big uh, rectangular shape um, and then a little bit back. Okay, this. about two to one in highs to width. Henry, we cannot see. Cannot hear me? No, no, see. We cannot see, see your oh, brush. Oh. Cannot see my drawing? Can uh -huh. you see? No, your brush. Uh, it's oh, oh, I see. Uh, we see the water. Oh, I see. It's just off the camera. There you are. There we go. OK, sorry. All right. So I'm going to draw this picture. Just draw some control points. Okay. Uh, pay attention to the to the angle of the head. Just you can draw a stick uh, guideline. You know, some just angle of the line, and uh, just one stroke for the leg, maybe something like that. And make sure they are on the ground and then they are grounded correctly. So the, the length of the leg, uh, the four, four legs should be uh, upper. Yeah, it's two dimensional, I mean, the, in the rear. And yeah, this one split from a triangle shape, tail there. So if I make a mistake, I still can correct it. I, I know. I'm, not a good drawer. So even I do this, I still out of proportion sometimes. But I can see it at least. You can use your fingernails. I'm, my teacher always do that. So um, I don't have to draw the second one because uh, this one actually uh, will help to define the next. You see, this is uh, the stroke of a side brush, right? Side brush. All right, and uh, you don't have to follow exactly the tonality of my or the copy, um, but you know, just general, general. Each one would be different, like I, I, I did in, in the early diagram. So each one is different. Um, Henry, I can't see what you're copying. You cannot see my. I can see your strokes, but I have I don't I can't see the picture of the deer. Oh, the picture. Okay, let me let me change the picture. Is it in the handout? Okay, now you can see, right? Oh, okay. Yes. It's on thank the left you. one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Let me enlarge it. Okay, you can see it better now. Okay. Now I I start from the hip, right? This the um, I I have to adjust a little bit. I think I made the body a little too long. So as long as I, so my join just the first mis mistake I made, <laughs> so I can correct that. I don't have to follow my join either. All right, so I, I made it a little shorter. 
I, you know, it was here, that's too long. So, and then I just draw the belly with light ink. And you can use dry brush to fill in a little bit. But I, I will leave this white and the, this, this is a white tail kind of, so um, you, can, you can start draw the, uh, you can you can use the light ink to draw like uh, the pencil, you know, you, uh, but you can still uh, adjust it. So use dry brush to draft it a little bit, you know, then you can make it uh, make it certain with the uh, dark ink. It's, uh, it's all possible. Um, it's something like that. And then I just draw. So basically I exhaust the brush before I reload. And that always good to give you all the gradation from uh, dark to light, from uh, wet to dry, all right? That makes the painting always nice. And use test paper or blotting paper, that, you know, with uh, this uh, very helpful to stop bleeding sometimes with the blot paper. Okay, now I use a darker ink to draw this, uh, uh, ear. Okay, I think the ear is like that. And then, like that. And then the back line kind of bent. You know, I kind of redefine it. it. It doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, some ambiguity is good. And then I draw the the uh, forehead, should be forehead here. Yeah. It, it's side view, it's four, uh, three quarter side. So not not very long, foreshortened or back shortened, whatever you call it. And it's like a very happy face. Okay, okay. And then I draw this uh, curve, curve out and then in, and then just like a silver. So notice the angle of the curve. They're, they're not just the straight lines, but to make it interesting. It's pretty thick with the the um, the nail buck, right? Okay. Now I use even darker ink to do the um, four legs. So I I can repeat a little bit to make the shoulder more powerful. Uh, you can even enhance something like that. Then I, when the ink is feel right, I just go directly one. You see, I, I just draw like a calligraphy. Um, I think it might be too long. Let me, I'll fix that. Just something like that. And the, this part could be, this is in the front, actually closer to the viewer. So this is dark also. Okay, start there. This this is a joint. Goes back there and then turns front. Just one stroke. Very decisively. And then um, the tail. Okay. Okay, this leg is kind of interesting. Bent. Uh, it's basically straight, a little bit, a little bit like that. Oops. Yeah, when I repeat, you know, when I, my um, scientific brain to work, it always leads me to disasters. So I just try to do it to artistically, just you know, my four sticks <laughs> concept works better than this names for different parts, that kind of thing. It always um, stop me from the, the life join kind of, with life, the vitality, calligraphy kind of approach. <clears throat> but if you can combine both, it will be the best, let me tell you. Most artists in modern time, they, they are good in both uh, drawing and the Western train and the calligraphy.
Okay, here's the hoof, my challenge part. Okay. I just leave it uh, like uh, very suggestively. Okay, my, you can, you can dot, um, another thing is that the pattern, you can dot it with uh, something like that. It, uh, we call it a flower pattern or plum pattern. Um, here, this is this kind of. So it also add uh, some interest to the to the gradation. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, wet, in, uh, dry into wet, or uh, dark into dark light, wet into wet. Okay, now um, I just use. Uh, I'm using the basic. Uh, Actually, a basic soft brush. I could use the combination brush to just dot the eye with uh, pure ink, no water, just the ink. I can even dot on the wet spot, you know, it's, because it's pure, it's, you will not smear it. So just a hint of the nose, wet into damp. You can draw a little dark. All right. I think I'm okay with the body. So now um, you can use stiff brush for the antlers, the, the horn. Okay, so use the dark to start with. Bone stroke. Okay. And then change to light, just add water. Dry the brush with a paper towel or, or a piece of paper, then uh, wet a little bit and keep it dry, not, not to, to smear. So you want to have this kind of a uh, dry stroke, dry texture. You can go. On top or lower, I think the yeah, it's, it's like that. Uh, it has kind of partial outline, but you don't have to. You can you can you can do try in one stroke. If not enough, just do a little partial uh, outline. You know that something something like that. That's the other short side. Okay, and that's my male oh, um, deer. And then I'll do the back one. So this one, I, I, I can start from the, the head because not much body shows, right? So let me just make sure the, the, the head are close to each other, not far, <laughs> falling, at, falling apart. Okay, so this is a, a, a ear. Can you see my stroke? I think you can, hope you can see. Oh. Okay, I'll, I'll do it uh, fast. Keep keep looking here. Do you remember the first uh, diagram we learned? One, two, three, right? And then a kickback, uh, muscle, the mouth, lip. It should be very thin. I made it a little fat than the original, but that's okay. We can make it thinner. Lean, okay, just like that. Um, yeah, I think this part could be a little smaller, but let me try. It's too thick. Okay, it's American, American deal. <laughs> And uh, this is the shoulder, this is the back. This, I still have to indicate, you know, those parts, the, the key points. And it's the slant behind this little slant here. And just, 
have a lot. It's not uh, this lift leg. This uh, one standing, one lift. So this should be a little taller because it's behind. And you have to count the uh, perspective. Uh, so this is the feet there. We'll just do one stroke instead of outline, and we just make it something easy. Just very sketchy, drafty. All right, and then uh, feet of uh, the rear leg here. Yeah. All right. That's it, I think. Oh, that I, I use pure ink. Just the, the ink cake with maybe a little bit. Ink cake um, has a, a texture and it could be very uh, dark. So, Just make it easy, not to dramatize, to, you know, not make up too much makeup. Um, the mouth could be a little, I mean, nose and mouth could be a little accent with a dark. All right. And you can also dot the highlight the tip of the nose, uh, ear. <laughs> this one should be here. Okay. Try to enhance that dark, not dark enough. So still uh, can adjust here and there. All right. And now I, I will do a little background to um, add a, um, uh, you know, very suggestive background. And you can use a uh, brush maybe to draw some grass. Um, just use the, this brush, this basic stiff brush. This is the old brush, it's split. I like the, the split brush. So just draw some grass with a light ink. So nothing is darker than the, the uh, host and hostess. Okay, just the supporting, supporting. So you can use very light ink, just draw some grass or weeds um, on the corner here with dry brushing. It, it, it's something like an orchid leaf technique, it would be fine. Just, you know, like three stroke grouping. If you have done a good job on orchid, it, it's easy. Uh, just keep the grouping and uh, keep a sense of, a, you can use the grass to find the, the plan of the, or the, um, the ground a little bit. So this side here, just, so this looks like a slope. This is the grass end. Okay, so a little bit here, the background. Very suggestive, nothing um, very, Nothing will jump or pop, or, you know. Or, but you can add, still add a little bit dark, with like a wings, you know, just give a little variation in, in the tonality, the dryness or wetness. Uh, you don't have to paint the flowers, but you could if you want, just like white flower. And I also do a little branch, uh, suggesting trees, you know, with wind in the autumn or spring. Um, and, uh, because I got some drops of uh, ink there already, so I, 
it, it will help to hide that. And then I, um, you can you can draw some uh, falling leaves. Grouping is it everything three, maybe five, you know, a good number. This uh, dance and the sparse we call that grouping or separation in Western art. We call that grouping and separation. So some some close some. Uh, R. So this is a, and then you can you can use a little because we, we try to keep it all black and white. You can use a little color if you want, you know, like a green or orange to do this. But I, I just try to use ink on this. And you can see the idea of ink as a color, ink tonality, different ink as color. Uh, we suggest more outside to the frame, so don't be afraid to break the, uh, the line. Oops, <laughs> it's very light, so it will disappear. Okay, let me see. Just concentration disperse. Okay. Just enhance the, the pattern that I try to get. You can also use white. I already have some sparkling um, sparkles, if you can see it. At a certain angle, you should see that. Can you see it? There's some. Uh, so, can you, you can see that, right? Sparkling, very. Nice, like a snow. Yeah, it's like snow. So let's make it a snow thing. So if you if you wash the, the sky, you'll make it feel more like snow. It will show the sparkles. But it's still, you know, you don't need to it already ha have like a background, uh, the white on the background making it look like, uh, seems like a snow already. So um, we can just say, Christmas, <laughs> white Christmas, <laughs> white Christmas. Yeah, what up? Why not? Christmas in uh, May. <laughs> yeah, the reindeers could be white Christmas. Yeah, you don't have to write that. Oh, someone asked. How to sign your name? Um, I think uh, my answer is that uh, you can just sign your first name, a given name. Uh, I, I, you know, that's the shortest. Uh, that's the shortest. Then you can add you, if you have room, if you want, you can add uh, the uh, the whole name, or you can add uh, a year, or then a season, or title of the painting, a poem. So it all depends on how you want it. You can write a whole line of a poem, or you can uh, just do a short signature. So there's no certain rule, but there is. Uh, it does make difference if you uh, if you have to plan it to. to there's a tail there to make it. Uh, Exact, you know, to be part of the composition. Um, so I think it, it would be nice to to find something to write the, the whole sentence there that kind of block the the chi there is force the, the viewer to go that direction. Um, it, the sample didn't give me any hint. Let me see if I can.
Let me see if we can just Google to see if there's any poem that has to do with snow and the deer. Um, I'll just Google it. Let's see. I just search uh, about uh, um, deer and uh, snow form. Okay, I, I found a poem says, uh, uh, Dear in the garden welcomes the uh, spring snow. That, that sounds good. Yang Nu Yuan Xing Jie Yang Chen Xue. Happy to spring, happily ex, uh, welcomes spring snow. So that's a very interesting one. I'm going to write. <coughs> It's by some Asian poem. Anyway, I just write. Ooh. I will translate it later. And then um, we used the the, the uh, year of red, uh, it's a metal red. And then uh, I can write the full name, Li Xiao Hui, in my first name, okay, like that. Okay, it's because I need the space to to complete the that line. Then I'll put it, this deal there. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I can use full name or just the or last name. It doesn't matter. Uh, oh, here's uh, my just given name. So you know, I just grab anything. Uh, it, it all works. Just. A red spot. You know, there's no, no um, particular reason. Okay, let me see what uh, what is it. Okay. What, what's the meaning? Lu Yuan Xing Jie Yang Chen Xue. How do you translate in Google? Maybe. Um, deer uh, in the garden. Uh, happily welcomes, uh, uh, accepting or uh, gre uh, greets the Yang Chun is uh, the what's that the season? I think that's early spring, early spring snow. Welcomes uh, uh, lucky, Xing could be lucky uh, or fortune. Uh, Usually, this season, the early spring uh, uh, snow is a, is, a, is a good sign. Oh, by the way, deer is a Chinese uh, symbol uh, for um, not, not uh, uh, whales, but a specific kind of whales. It's called a stipend. Stipend is the official salary 
uh, usually uh, given as uh, estates, or you know, it could be the garden of the uh, with deal or um, or uh, grains, uh, you know, like uh, um, measured uh, by the uh, food. You know, how to say grains? Yeah, uh, weeds or, or rice. Uh, that kind of thing, stipend. It's not cash, but it could be cash, I think, <laughs> or a buck of silk. So official stipend is uh, very reliable. It's like, uh, you know, you work for government, you have a retirement plan. That's something like a very, very uh, uh, secured uh, life. The official career is always the best in China, even today, uh, to be government officials. So stipend pronounced as lu. It's the same uh, as the lu, uh, deer in Chinese. So uh, we always paint the deer um, to symbolize good official career, successful career in, uh, in the silver, silver, silver service in the, in the government uh, bureaucracy. You understand? Uh, stipend, that's uh, the word. Uh, so lu, along with other uh, symbols like, uh, let me show you. We have a picture in this book. Well, this book is available online if you want to get a copy. Um, see this, this page, this last page of the book it is a traditional painting uh, with good uh, symbols for longevity, which is the peach and uh, the uh, crane, right? You're familiar with this uh, birthday. Sometimes it, it would be a good gift to have that. And also, if someone is in the uh, pursuit of an uh, official career, you are already in the system uh, civil service, you can add this uh, stipend, a uh, lu, deer. So deer and the uh, her, uh, not heron, crane and the peach symbolize longevity and the stipend or rich, richness or, you know, um, a very, uh, res respectful for uh, life or uh, yeah because the official status is very high in traditional Chinese society and the uh, lu symbolized their uh, livelihood the stipend uh, the government give them um, they are very well paid right <laughs> so they don't have to corrupt that's the idea okay um that's the meaning of this uh, this uh, uh, sentence the spring uh, snow in the falling in the uh, garden is uh, here I, I just randomly checked the online to search for this keywords uh, the, the snow and the uh, deer it comes up with this I, I have to find out the author later anyway um, so let me see how everybody's doing. If it's too fast or too, too slow, let me know. I, 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 we have uh, one less than one hour left. For, uh, let's see, it's 12 to one. So 50 minutes left. Uh, there's some interruption. I'll, I'll, I'll be willing to extend a little bit uh, longer uh, just to make it up. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if any work we can share here. Oh, great. Uh, Charlene, uh, yeah, the nice join. That, yeah, that's a good way to study. Uh, just like I did in the sketchbook. Yeah, just take notes like that it will help. Oh, beautiful, Terry. Yeah, you're your freestyle is <laughs> as good as it gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I've got the, uh, yeah, you did the same painting with me. Okay, Pamela, Pamela, yeah, I said, I like the idea of a uh, mountain, uh, luxury mountain with uh, three deers on top, the slope. That's a nice composition you made. Uh, I like the family, beautiful. Okay, um, Suzanne, Mary, Tabush, 
Oh, beautiful the couple. Yeah. Yeah, the front one could be a little darker than the back one. Um, if it could still go back, but uh, it, it looks very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Very good. So um, everybody doing a wonderful job. So now let me give you um, some more examples and then we, we may choose one to do uh, another complete painting, okay? Uh, this this uh, next uh, uh, collection I have would, uh, would be uh, from the master, I think, in the field called uh, uh, Chen Xiongyi. He's uh, 81 years old now, I think. Let me see, where's the, uh, where do I find it? Okay, let's hold up. Let's see where is it? Um, properties, okay. Picture dealer book, okay. Picture, picture. Okay, got it. Let me just go through this with you. Um, let me close this. Okay, um, it disappears. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, this is a 3D um, painting by Chen Xiongli. Um, this another one. I I like the um, idea of uh, um, putting a group of the deer in the same painting uh, along a river, a stream, uh, which hide the feet. Uh, that I don't like to paint. <laughs> you know the, why? Uh, this is grassland, like with the wild flowers. Let me. Put it larger so you can see better. Yeah, you can see there's always a host like the, the leading deer, then the other deers follow. Uh, uh, this one goes like a circle. It's a, also a stream, um, a stream painting with uh, white uh, flowers and rock on the bank. Uh, a little bit hint of a distant mountain or hill, and a little, even a little reflection there, but no feet, with no hoof, just one, just the one hoof. That's fine with me if I want to do this many. I like it because I really have trouble with feet. All my animal feet looks too big. Um, and this one is, is nice with a, uh, goes like a circle also, it's a river bank thing. And this one, of course, uh, in a river with a bamboo. Uh, this one is a, like a uh, fantasy, you know, with Dunhuang. Dunhuang is a Buddhist cave um, kind of images. I, I, I didn't read it too carefully. But this one is a pure ink, like this one we did here. It um, was a very interesting composition. The, the long grass or reeds by the river bank. And uh, yeah, but this one is the, the form is in the river, the uh, buck is on the bank. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, I love this color. Do you like it? It's very modern. And I think this is probably uh, the latest style. He, he goes more colorful. Spring flowers uh, in the garden. Bamboo, uh, like mysterious, you know, the rock. But you know, the the the, it's very interesting that although they're very colorful, but you don't paint the deer with a uh, color, um, because uh, you you yeah you want to keep the essence of it. If you use color, I I have samples I show you, but uh, how would you like? 
uh, this is pure ink painting I really like. You know, there, there are a little bit hints of uh, color on the, in the river, um, but I really like the current, this little hint of a uh, uh, waterfall, really good. Uh, I like this a lot, drinking water, this little uh, form in the background, or male, f female, I think. This is his book, I didn't have a copy I would like to have someday. And this is a combination of the traditional uh, flower, like a lotus pond. It's a, it seems he liked to do deers with a river. This is very nice with a cherry blossom and the stream. Okay, um, beautiful, beautiful in tonality. Um, oh, this one is my favorite too. Uh, with a, similar to the painting we, we, we just did, right? This one, yeah, the same kind of uh, two deer, one male, one female idea. Okay, and uh, uh, this one I, I chose, I chose to put in the handout. I was, um, yeah, prepared if we, if you like it, we, we, we can try to do this. Uh, this one, has the, the hiking trail with the steps. You know, in China, the trail has this kind of steps. Uh, the, you meet the, the, it's like you're there facing the, the deer on your trail. That's the kind of idea with the mountain in the uh, distance. Very nice. And he just wrote the story where he, he met those uh, deers in, in, in the mountain. Uh, from memory or something. Um, this one is a uh, yellow stone, um, memory from yellow stone. He lived in the States for 15 years before he returned to China, to China um, in from mid uh, eight, 19, uh, I think uh, in, the, yeah, in the early uh, century, <laughs> this century, I think. Okay, this one, uh, another crossing river scene. Very nice. And you can see the inscriptions in Oracle style. Does it look like a deer? The one on the, uh, the right. It says a deer name picture. Yeah. And this is the, I'll see, we have seen. This is another one. Oh, waterfall. Yeah, I think a waterfall with a stream, always nice. Streaming. Okay, this is the nice gesture. Tula. Where do we get an out? Oh, for these pictures, I'll, I'll upload to the. Where did you send out? Um, these are not in the handout. Did you get the email I sent yesterday? I, I emailed everyone. We can forward that to, uh, to you if you didn't get it. Oh, I, I, I'll put it in the online class also later after the class. I, I'll, I'll put all the references there so you can um, just, you know, get from the online class, the ning.com. Uh, I didn't upload, upload there yet, but uh, um, the handouts only have uh, a few pages from this, this book. This book, the, you can get this book for only $15, we have a few copies left. Should be enough for the class though, if you want to have. You can order it today after the class. Um, yeah, this is a cleaner, larger copy of the yellow stone. Uh, we don't really see any landmark of yellow stone. I think that's the, the stream, the hot spring, something like that, or some, you know, just the waterfall. I, I think these are the, Sunflowers, very nice. You can see a little bit of half gone bee style with a uh, spree style. I really like this one. Maybe we should do this. So I'm debating, I was debating between this one and the, the mountain trail one with the handout. Uh, this one is nice with a yellow flower. You know, we have lots of yellow flowers in the hill. I think he lived in Los Angeles. He's probably got that inspiration locally here. I really like this color. 
beautiful. Um, willow tree. This, uh, this is the three gentlemen or two, uh, yeah, three gentlemen, orchid, bam, uh, plum of bamboo and the, uh, yeah, traditional. And this one has uh, uh, the same kind of like Yellowstone painting. This uh, has waterfall behind. Very, I like the color of these paintings, very light, very delightful. Uh, it has the impressionistic feel for it. I don't know if I describe, you, you get it. It's, it's a, um, in, in, as he has influenced by impressionist, he, he said in his uh, uh, interview. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is another stream, mountain stream view. There's uh, some wild flowers, beautiful. And this one is similar to the one we just did, it's two in like orchids in the background. And this one has sun, this one has autumn leaves. And uh, this one, cherry blossom. So his, his writing is part of the composition. He usually write um, the story and, or, you know, his uh, artistic uh, comment, like a theory, some things like that his inspiration basically. Yeah. This small piece of uh, so this, uh, that's, uh, that's his last year he had show in this month about yeah when exactly one year ago he had uh, 80s celebrated his uh, 80s birthday. That's the, the catalog. I don't have that catalog but this is the in the news <laughs> online I found. Okay. Very oh I love this one too. The the flower, the white uh, that I mean the, the purple and the yellow combination. It's uh, just uh, very pretty. I, I like the ink in the animals and combined with colorful backgrounds. But not so so much to um, destroy the ink rhythm. Um, so that's the best. Oh, I really like this one, this falling uh, stream. If this stone is a little lighter, it would be better. Um, maybe just one deer would, would do. It's very poetic, you know, having a falling water behind. Like having death in the natural. All right, that's what we need to go. <laughs> where do we need to go? Anyway, um, very nice color again. Oh, this composition, so beautiful. I like the the hanging, just the branch of a, a giant uh, pine tree. Uh, you're looking uh, from the you know bird's eye view of a group uh, running under the tree. Uh, it says this pine longevity. Uh, it, again, you know, it's a symbolism of uh, longevity and uh, happiness, maybe. Okay. Oh, very good. Oh, very good. This is the river scene. This is a river. Oh, that's the first one. So um, I, I'll, I'll do a quick demo. Um, we have half an hour. So let's just pick one. Um, I'll do the one we, 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 we have in the handout. Let me see which one is that. Okay, I remember, it's this one. How do you like this one? <laughs> and uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a kind of squarish. Let me just use a uh, horizontal, um, not horizontal one. Okay, so um, just get some ink here. And you can see a little bit different uh, approach, maybe um, with different artists. This. 
little different, I think, but basically the same. Um, with this front view, like uh, we started earlier, we will we'll do the, the head for first, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to draw, I, I better draw. So you, I'll give you some time to draw this if you want. Um, so I would roughly put this head in the, in the, one, in the third, you know the third? This is the focal point, right, right here. So that's, that's your focal point. And this a little bit off search, but definitely not in the middle. This is another head. This one just next to that. This is not, not important. So I'm not going to draw that one. So this is very important. You don't want to put the, the host um, right in the middle of the uh, paper. So it's a little bit off the center. And just draw the body in an oval shape, maybe just four legs. Uh, just the direction of the, the plant is very important. And the length of the leg, that's all I need. I don't want to draw the, 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 the thickness of the line, but the angle, you know, maybe that's very important. To the relationship. And notice the plane where they, they, they land. This, this is um, like that. So it, they, they are on a flat, Kind of slope though. So this, this front leg is longer than the uh, back one. Let's just draw this first. Okay, I'll draw this shoulder first. Okay, then the body, the hip. Okay. Now you can, re by repeat, you add some, some, uh, um, uh, make it darker, you know. Okay, now I do this uh, because the ink is right for this. I just continue with this. And that's, that's the rear leg. And then the front leg. I like the kind of loss in the front. So you just dry stroke. Uh, but if you didn't have that, you have to live with that. Just make sure next time I do this, I just dry it. I want to have this like that. So it, it's dry brush, dry brush behind. At least I got one correct. But it's okay, you cannot really duplicate someone's uh, original, uh, like it's, it's very difficult to reproduce. Even himself cannot do that. You know. Okay, now um, let's do this uh, head. Just a triangular shape. I do this forehead first, and then the ear. Uh, we can do one narrower than the other or something. Just vary a little bit. And then the kick for the, <laughs> kick back for the nose. And then draw, just draw. I just dip a little water, diluted the, the paper and then uh, lighten it, uh, dry a little bit, draw the side of the, the cheek. And then just continue with the, very light um, neck. Mm -hmm. And uh, the antler is just uh, a little darker, but not too dark. We need to save the dark to the, the eye, things like that. So just darker, a little darker. You can try with a piece of paper. Always, always test, test, make it too dark. Add some water, too uh, too wet. You know, add some more, uh, add, dry some more, things like that. So um, this shape is like a, uh, W still. I think one, two, two, just like that. 
uh, you know, simplified and just curves in from the other side. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you better practice a little bit on, on a piece of paper so you get used to the move. You cannot hesitate when you do it. And that's the short, um, short in, for short in, uh, the short branch in the, in the front. That's the, the W in the end of the anchor. So I'm going to dot the eye later after this ink gets a bit more dry. But not too dry completely. So I also would do the dark tail later. So we we just continue to the let me see. I, I can outline the belly just like that, suggestively in the chest a bit suggestion. <coughs> so my my form should not be too far from the father of my parents. So it should be and then looking back, yeah, it's interesting. So the he she he 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 kind of lead the group. So make sure the communication is is uh, is uh, uh, interesting. You know, with the family. So we can make this two a little closer because I have larger paper than that uh, original. So I'm, I'll make this a little separate. Just a little separate. Okay, uh, I did the fork pad first. It's okay. It's, then you can make up that. Um, there's some horn, something I really don't know sticking out. Anyway, probably the artists don't really know what uh, they stand for. It's just uh, okay. Neck. And uh, chest, shoulder. Okay, just one stroke. Basically, the shape should be done no more than a couple of strokes, and then the, no hesitation to add to the form. This is a very leggy, um, team, like a one-year-old form. Very long neck. You know, I feel. More comfortable with the jaw legs, no? I still need a lot of practice. To... I, I haven't drawn deal in the uh, last decade since I met the artist uh, in early 90, uh, 90s. Mid yeah. 90s. Yeah. Okay. Let's... So it's a little thick. But... It's okay. Oh, I made it too, too, if a hook is too long, it look like a horse. That's, you know, or a donkey. <laughs> that's, a, that's the, I'm gonna cover this something. So it's, now let's go back to the, um, the main gear to uh, back, to add a little dot for the pattern and then uh, make sure it's, very dark to dot the eye. So we really want the eye to stand out very dark. And uh, a lot of people, when they do animal, they use, uh, they don't care about the tonality of you know, making the eye blur. That's, that's bad. So always make the eye the darkest. That's a good idea. So the, even if it's a small, you can you have to keep the eyes dark, darkest. Okay. Eyeball a little bit. And this just make it look young. All right. And also I have some dark spots here. Oops. Recent, is My neck is a little short. I don't know. I can change that too. I think this part may be too, too uh, fat. Yeah, 
I should have done the join first. Actually, I tried to beat the time. So just be free to finish the rest of it. Concentrate on the rest when you try to. Sometimes you know the over the good part will overshadow the mistakes. So I, that's the idea. You don't, you don't worry about the mistake. Just concentrate on the next. Okay, now you click on the nose. I'm using the same brush, it's uh, kind of to try to make it easy. But sometimes it's a good idea to use smaller brush for details for, for beginner situation. Okay. There's some pattern. Yeah, when you try to modify, just use different tone. Oh. Uh, just use different shape of the stroke. So you, you use dark into light. All right. This is actually this one is a little too dark, too large. Anyway, this could be a little. Just a demo. Um, <clears throat> let me use the uh, light ink to outline those steps. It has some uh, looking, it, it kind of looking down from the up here and then goes. And then the perspective is a little tricky you see here. And then some uh, grass in the, uh, in, you know, this kind of uh, reclusive solitude, <laughs> reclusive mountain has no grass on the way, so it symbolizes no, no people, you know, no people, no tourists. Very hermit kind of environment. It's only deers and flowers. Just the grass. Very light. And, uh, That's the trail going down here. Okay, then the branch, it's uh, in the front of the, the thing is it's closest actually. Make it, it uh, looks like a flower and birds painting, we call it. Uh, the animal painting could be landscape or it, it will be just like a little, um, Little add on, you know, like a scale to the to the large tree or you know, mountains. Here is very useful in that regards, but it's because it could also be major uh, component in in the flower and the birds kind of thing. You don't have to be birds, animals, flower and animals. I don't know what name of this flower, but uh, it's interesting. Okay. And now I just use uh, some color. You don't have to wait it dry, but uh, you can if you want to. Okay. Um, some, uh, some yellow. Grouping is the mm. most important to see in, in flower painting. Don't worry about the individual flowers, just the 
group. The, this, this is the main group has some uh, origin in it. And the, uh, the rest will be cooler and uh, softer. We can add more water. So we start with the rhythm or something with the, uh, some curls, some sparse, some dark, some uh, uh, dense and sparse. We can add a little green. Okay, um, now I use a little blue to make a green, just make, make it uh, into a, it should be, should be blue green, so more, more blue, maybe go something like that. Maybe go green. Wash the, you can just use ink, mute it a little bit. Yeah, okay, just atmospheric perspective tells us the, the more uh, it tends to lower and, and get far away. So just add a little more blue, and eventually it would be just the blue and a little ink, mm -hmm. very, very light, light, very light, almost not seen in the distance. And just and get a little shape of the peak. Um, you can you can overlap a little bit, you know, just the very behind. I try to ground them so they don't flow, but it doesn't matter. They might just appear in the in the mist. Okay. And uh, you, you may notice a little bit amber there on the. Well, we can mix. Number like yellow, orange, and this in the middle there. We have amber here. Let me just dilute it. You, you can add green to it. You can add some red. Or just adjust the temperature. It will look gray. Gray, not too or orange or just a little bit more. We call this color um, color according to kinds. So different uh, category, di different colors. So it, uh, our human brain will interpret the same. The grass is blue, and the, we use local color mostly. You know, we call it local color. Then uh, without uh, considering the light, but uh, you can use uh, impressionistic colors. You know, just uh, uh, to borrow from the Western concept. Well, I got some nice sweaters there. That's nice. Uh, where I suppose the sign it would be another scene, uh, part of the composition, you know. Um, so that's about it. Let's see what he wrote. And then maybe we can find another poem or something. Yeah, he just says auspicious chi or energy uh, filled the, the hills of mountain, uh, the valleys of mountain, and the flowers, the wild flowers, uh, uh, I can't read that writing, uh, blooming or something like that. Henry? Flowers. Yes. 
Um, my battery is going down. Okay. Uh, I want to say thank you. And I did have one question. Okay. I imagine this will only um, be through. I have trouble having light and dark. I on my brush. I have a hard time uh, learning how to do that. It's is it just through learning practice? Um. Okay, yeah, I think uh, uh, the best way to do that, uh, yeah, you have to, you have to just use a lot of uh, uh, testing paper like that. So you, you, you can try before you, um, you actually paint. So just use a different amount of uh, uh, water to get, so basically the, the light is what left in the brush. So just leave the brush um, heel clean you'll yes. get the light and just just load a little bit a little bit dark to the front so you get everything right with so you know just don't blend don't try <laughs> to blend to get the light just uh, let it uh, uh, you, you may start from dark it will turn uh, to light okay let me show you this is the the idea you if you if you start from you know dark and then you just keep going so you, oh. you get you get all the gradation and you can go back a little bit so that's that's it's not a single tone okay and you can do it uh, not just back and forth back and forth that will keep it uh, even uh too smooth so if you just uh mo we call it multiple load if i if i just but sometimes if if it, if the dark is too dark you get the, like this, like this. This is not very good. So you want to add a little water. Just touch oh, it. Just a little water would uh, soften it. That's uh, uh, I often do that. You don't maybe pay attention, but I, I always do that. So when I'm ready to to paint with light, uh -huh. okay, I touch a little dark without blending. I touch the water, so it's uh -huh. maybe oh. off the picture. Uh, off, let me let me just touch it here. So this is the water. So your pure ink and then touch water. Okay. Then you do it like that. So oh. you get the dark, lighter, dark, you know. So it, the heel of the brush is uh, is clean. So you get a gradation all the, along the way. Well, uh, thank you very much because I really enjoy uh, these classes. And I'll see you next week. Okay, see you next uh, Saturday. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Let me see. So let me sign this painting uh, before you go. Um, I uh, will find um, like, uh, I, I, I translated the title as a uh, uh, mountain trail with uh, white flowers. Dear, dear, a mountain trail with uh, white flowers. So let's just do a Google translation, see what Google says. Oh, I mean, it's already, uh, yeah, I have English, but I don't have Chinese, right? Let's go to Google. Let me show you how to how do I do it. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so let's say we have a Chinese, uh, an English poem, and we want to translate into uh, Chinese. Okay. Right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you can you can uh, go to Google Translate. You can search translate on Google and you will find this tool and we can just type in the title or the poem we, we want to write. So it will be uh, Dear um, Mom. Oops, I, I think I'm typing, <laughs> typing Chinese. Uh, okay, sorry. I have to change to, to English. So dear. Um, 
Wildflowers. Okay. <laughs> now you uh, you change to Chinese simplified Chinese traditional. I I, I like. Um, so this is English. Lu yu ye hua zai san lu sa. So it it it, it just um, you need to maybe change this the. Uh, which, uh, you can, you can, you can, you know, it's like imagery poem, so you can you reverse uh, the order. Mountain trail. Uh, okay, this should be mountain trail. So until I feel correct, the mountain trail. Um, and he says, yeah, the, on the mountain trail, there's a deer with the flowers. Um, I still like mountain trail in the, in the back. I think in Chinese it's better. So, I just like the original. So normally we, we, we just use uh, uh, seven words. So I would just use uh, uh, you know, you can omit to uh, on. Let's see. Yeah, well, well, yeah, okay, but you have to keep. Uh, well, they just put uh, anyway. I I'll, I'll just add the the last word on um, in the end, so we don't use zai shen sound. You know, just. Uh, Two, instead of two words, I just use one to so keep it uh, seven words. Let me return to. Uh, you can search this, you know, one by one different uh, ca uh, calligraphy. I think I give you a site where you can convert to convert the whole sentence into uh, Chinese script. So I just copy this and then I will do um, a search maybe on the other site called the Chinese. Uh, calligraphy tool. Cool. Oh, if you can find it, um, not, not this one. Uh, of Chinese uh, I forgot where is that uh, site? Chinese calligraphy. I don't know if uh, if it is converter or something. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, there's a link. I I'll, I'll put it in the. I already give you uh, someday that I think the tool you can you can put you know you can convert the uh, the Chinese. Oh, I think that's here exactly what I want. So you just put in that words. I just copied paste here, and I put a vertical. And I choose this uh, um, cursive style, and you could even get calligraphy. There we go. So that's. Um, I think there is a character missing, but I like it. You can. You can omit that. That end, you know. No. Okay. So because I use the. Traditional characters, so it's um, this tool is only for simplified. So that that one character is missing. But uh, anyway, I I will add that. If it, if you use simplified, you should have all the uh, because this website only um, have the simplified font. So if I use the second character is missing because it is uh, in traditional in traditional characters. So let me write it. You understand how this works? Yeah, just uh, 
but you better ask me to to uh, confirm but google will do a good job you, you know like a, it's understandable but not uh, perfect in most cases so we have to just polish a little bit so i would write that translation basically It says a uh, 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 deer and uh, wildflowers on mountain trail. Uh, you, you, you don't have to add the word shang means on. Zai uh, means on, on some top, <laughs> some, some surface. Uh, anyway, so you just use seven characters, seven, yeah, seven characters for the line. And then I just write the year for the drag, uh, for the rat year, and then just uh, my first name. Uh, notice that I use a large brush, but I really like to uh, write very small because uh, if you write too big, it will destroy the proportion, the the scale. Um, so this this is uh, important on landscape. It's uh, because this has half landscape kind of thing, not just the flower and the birds. Okay, so we keep the characters small and they also seal small. Okay, here. Oh, right here. Uh, I better use my, because I already signed this first name, I'll use last name. And if you sign full name, you can use e either one or both. You know, I, I have uh, several name sales, some with a complete name, some just first name, some first, last name. It's all possible. Just the, there's no certain rule, but don't uh, you don't use you know like two uh, of the same. Would be fine. Right. And that that completes the composition of this sample. Um, I I already gave you the sample in the handout I emailed. If you didn't get it, I will resend it to you and I'll also upload it to the website. I wish to see your homework there. Um, and you can see how atmospheric this turns out. I wish you can see. It's very light, but uh, after mounting, it will show um, the color. I, I really like it this way, <laughs> just a very subtle uh, color, you know. So nothing of the, except these branches to be darker than the deal. So this one in the front, so this, this is the, the foreground. And not, uh, this is the middle ground, the focus. And then any, everything else is, uh, uh, we, we, we don't use the ground in this uh, sense. It's two-dimensional, basically. Um, yeah, we don't really paint distant mountains. I have a little paint of something in there. That's nice. So uh, we got lots of sparkling, creating more kind of a decorative effect. Yeah. OK, so. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I will be around uh, to answer any questions. If you have other things to do, you're welcome to, to leave. I will uh, send you the recording for the entire class for the review. Okay. Henry. Henry. Yes. Charlene. Charlene. Would, yeah. you, would you send us in an email that um, place on on in google where you go for translation okay yeah it's Did a you cool do that? Uh, it just uh you can you can just uh put a let me show you how to how do you get it um um yeah i think it, it, there's um okay if you 
let me show you where you get it. See that screen again. Uh, this is the calligraphy tool. Let's go back to Google Translate. Okay, now you can see my, uh, okay, this is the Google, okay. Here, uh, you can just say um, translate, Google Translate, I think. You can just type in Google Translate, or Translator. Uh, it will say, yeah, from English to Chinese, maybe you can do that. And it will come up, something like this. This is a, uh, you can get on, on your phone even. It's, uh, it's very, just type in a sentence, Chinese, uh, ch Google Translate English to Chinese. Then you type in the English text and then you select the target language. You can select any language. There's Chinese traditional and Chinese um, contemporary. I guess by default it's simplified Chinese. I think simplified is good so you can, um, Let's say you can do the opposite. Sometimes I do the reverse translation to see if it makes sense. This is fun, always. Uh, let me see. So the original text is from English, uh, in, in Chinese. Then you can translate back to English to see if it's understandable. So this is a traditional, uh, simplified, let me see, traditional to from, okay, this is from. It's a mountain road with deer and white flowers. Okay, it makes sense. So when you modify something and then you can verify it, do a reverse translation, the mountain road, to, I said mountain trail, but mountain road is fine, right? Mountain road with uh, deer and uh, wild flowers. So that's, per, that's what this, this says. That's, that's what, what exactly this is. Um, and then you can, you know, if you put, uh, uh, if you, you can copy this line, suppose this is the original, your poem, your, your creative uh, line, um, you just paste it there, and then you put uh, target uh, simplified Chinese. Okay, no, no, this is English. English is here, is this one, okay. Every time it comes different, you know what? It, it, mountain roads it should be behind, yeah. So, yeah, but for a Chinese reader, the, the mountain road should be behind this, even the English, right? So we, we yeah, we can, we can uh, consider this like an imagery poem. You can just combine different words. And I think the Google translator can tell you which one is which. If you highlight, um, this is a simple version. If you go to the site, I have it um, where you can see each one corresponding to which characters. Um, let me see if I can go there. So if you go to Google Home, and I, I find it here um, on my Google Giga, uh, uh, apps, right? And there's a translate. You see, this is the G uh, with the Chinese character there. And this this actually, it's better because when I highlight certain words, it would it will show me. Yeah, it, it gives me a dictionary. Sometimes, uh, oh, it not always works. But sometimes when I highlight a word, yeah, it, it shows you know white flowers. So I know you see that deer. See, um, or a deer here. See, so I can use it as a dictionary, and then I can arrange it. Uh, arrange the sequence. In Chinese grammar, in po poetry, is, there's no, no um, not much grammar. You just put uh, together uh, the images uh, of different icons, you know, it creates uh, that kind of uh, um, picture. It's very picture, uh, how call, imagery, poem. So there's, you, you can interpret it in many ways. You can put in words like on or, or along or something like that. You don't have to put in the uh, poem. The Chinese only put like a bridge, uh, snow, and crow. That's a famous line. Yeah. So just just make a, a few um, 
long or just uh, adjective, you know, some description of uh, your, your, poem, your, your painting and try to limit it to seven characters. You can verify with uh, Victoria or me in the classroom if you're not sure. Um, and we have, uh, yeah, I showed you how to get that uh, script, right? So you can um, then copy to the, the script site to get the different script. So um, I, will, I will take a good picture of this painting and show you in the classroom. Okay, thank you for, uh, sorry for all the technical challenges we had with the interruption of the internet service. Um, and also, you know, I had a, a broken wire, so I cannot use my, uh, my Sony camera. Um, so next time I will, I'll do better, sure. <laughs> with with uh, more uh, normal equipment. Okay, thank you. Henry? Yes. Today I had trouble signing in. You will receive an email because I was going, um, you sent an email and so I clicked there and I put it on my calendar from my computer. Oh, and, I don't know this, I and then I would sign in and it would say that you were already having a session and I couldn't get in. Then it made me register and, ah, you know, finally I was able to get in at around 10 minutes later. But oh. I don't know what happened because I did write down and did it by hand. So uh, I don't know. Maybe you don't use the calendar. Uh, I no, they I, did the same thing. I did the same thing and didn't use the calendar and had it, trouble getting in. I think it's because you were having the internet connections. We all had the same issue. Okay. Not you. Uh, Henry was having internet connection issues. Oh, so well, I, didn't start a meeting, uh, wow. I didn't start a meeting on time. Right? Yeah, yeah, I had the same thing. It said that there was already a meeting in progress, so you couldn't sign in. You just could leave the meeting. If you tried oh. to sign in, it, it tried to sign you in as the host. Oh, I see. It's because there's no host. Uh, yeah, that's I, what happened. I, yeah, because it was interrupted. I didn't end. I didn't leave. So the host was still there. Uh, you were still logged in. Yeah, when I log in with uh, my phone, I, I was not acting as a host or something. Yeah, I think that has with the internet interruption. But this didn't happen very often, but uh, it's, when it happens, it's disastrous for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's technology <laughs> hard to control. <laughs> right, so we cannot live without uh, the internet in these days. Yeah, um, right. So yeah, I'm I, I'm glad that it works. It, you know, just the, the minute when we, when we start the lesson for a while, then it would went off again and come back. So this uh, this is a. Uh, I hope just you know. Uh, yeah, just just like some accidents in our painting, it, you know, it, it won't, nothing will stop uh, us from enjoying this. I think, <laughs> and, you know, I hope that you um, have learned uh, some basics, you know, about the stroke. Like I, I, I uh, tried to I mean, let's use the four kind of strokes you can practice. I mean, you can um, get familiarized and also the split brush the stroke. So I'm going to complete this. So there, there are uh, sides uh, stroke, middle uh, or, or centered stroke, pushing, pouring, and the split. Split split brush stroke. So that, that's the five basic strokes um, to apply. In any painting, if you combine all these, you get a very um, successful painting. Not, not just to use uh, like a uh, lazy strokes, like a little by little, try to 
to, to pull, push our um, site and then, uh, you know, this, yeah. So, so like these branches are, are straight for the brush, like a calligraphy. And this is straight brush, and side brush, straight, yeah. Something in between is, you know. like uh, I have lots of uh, um, mistakes, like, you know, and this, uh, this part, it doesn't matter uh, because sometimes you balance with the stiff ones, but like restricted ones. So it, you can just uh, um, treat it like a, like a abstract painting, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Um, let people to figure out to, to, to fix. I know this very leg, something like that. It, it looks more balanced with my lean leg, so, so what? Uh, it like, uh, just uh, don't worry about too much uh, realism, maybe. When I use my logic side of the brain, I start to make the painting look too, too stiff. So just try to lose up with uh, your in, uh, intuition, your, your child side of the brain, like a, you know, child painting, they don't really worry about uh, this uh, rational uh, thoughts. They just paint like uh, telling a story or feeling more, you know, just for the happiness of uh, the action. Okay, the art, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I, I like to um, maybe invite you someday to a, a Zoom meeting. It will be free, but with my uh, friends in China and have some, some conversation about Eastern and Western art. Maybe I invite one of my teacher to, to participate as well. So I will let you know when that is uh, set up. So yesterday we had uh, some connection with some old friends in China. It was fun to to discuss, uh, you know, the fractal painting, the technology with uh, uh, art, the inference of uh, game and <laughs> technology on art. Uh, even today we do this like a game, right? It's uh, it's virtual. Everything I, I have a class with virtual landscape painting, and it's free also every Wednesday. So I hope you can join that meeting. So you will see my painting process um, free uh, with uh, instructions from a paid class I I, I joined uh, the uh, art center uh, professor. So um, yeah, if you have time on, on Wednesday morning, join me again next week okay so thank you that'd be great if you could do that uh class with the the differences between eastern and western yeah the difference between eastern and western art um i tried to invite my good friend in florida um his name is uh, bill buckman uh by the way his name uh, i translated into chinese as a uh, buck uh, <laughs> buck person buck uh, boy <laughs> Jia man, you know, I, I carved the seal with the buck, uh, uh, the Chinese for, for buck. Um, buck. Yeah, Bill Buckman was, um, was interesting. I, he was in one of my first Zoom class. And we talked about that. Uh, he, he, he's a good um, intellectual artist. Uh, he's a musician, composer. He also can talk about music and art. Uh, giving lectures on music and art also. So uh, he's good at uh, zooming, zooming painting on abstract art and uh, figure painting. Um, I, I will talk to him, uh, see if uh, he's uh, interested in that. Maybe it will be in um, yeah, later June or something. Well, no, not be very soon, they're still uh, making schedules. For, yeah. So uh, it will be interesting. The audience will be both from the uh, Overseas Chinese and some Chinese uh, professors also. So they always speak and can understand English. So it will be in English, I hope. Last night it was in Chinese, but it was very, very uh, informative to, to, to see. You know, the lecture I took, <coughs> when, I, when I listened to the lecture, I was practicing my beers. So the, this is the gift I got from my daughter last Christmas. Um, oops. Gaming, 
Yeah, game is also like hunting, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's correlated, it's so interesting. So these words are, are just, you know, I, the notes I taken from the, uh, the presentation yesterday on, on Zoom. So I commented about the fractal design concept. I said uh, the Chinese uh, already developed this uh, concept. Instead of learning from natural, like a plein air painting, we, we got inspiration from uh, watching the leaking trace on a, on a broken wall, on a, on a you know, leaking uh, uh, wall, or um, the worn um, trace on the wood, on old uh, wood, something like that. So this, these are um, all, you know, they try to program, to, to use program to generate this kind of uh, uh, phenomena like uh, Hollywood use it to, to get uh, the movie uh, special effects to create the whole thing with uh, little uh, pixels of a, you know pattern or some, something. It's very interesting that uh, the in the West or maybe in the in the East too we we um, always observe something from a, a big shape into small shape. Nobody will start from a little detail, right? When you draw something, so um, yeah. So it, it, but when you try to understand a, a complicated phenomena, you try to lose it. You you try to simplify it to find the rules. And they talked about the, this very interesting rule of thirds when I talked about this thing, right? But if you look at the masters, even uh, you know the photographers. Um, they always put something right in the center or right, you know, on the side, but make it, try to then correct that, make, try to make a sense, make it more poetic. So it's, there's always a rule and uh, some, uh, we call it emergency, <laughs> some uh, disturbance, some uh, uh, something, you know, uh, uh, more and, and, and anti-symmetrical or, or, or uh, balanced. So there's always uh, happy accidents. So that's why I try to do something very um, subconscious, some very conscious. So it's a combination of both sides of the brain. Yeah, um, interesting. You know, everybody has the, the East and the West side of the brain or rational and the intuition brain. But even the Eastern painting, we, we also have logic and the spontaneous, you know, both sides. You just just try to balance in your painting in, in your creation. Okay. Uh, Charlie, you still have question about the glazing? Yeah. I, <clears throat> oh, Charlene, I'm sorry. Charlene, are you still? Yeah, there? I'm still here. Yeah. yeah the, the glazing means uh, to um, apply a color uh, over another layer um, very lightly. With usually it's a transparent color. Oh, okay. I noted the color. The it, same color or a different color? It could be different. Usually a, um, a flat, not a gradation, just the, uh, you can change the tone. I can, for example, glaze this flower to make it more orange. So I'll use uh, some uh, reddish yellow and glaze it, you know, uh -huh. change the, the tone, the, the, the uh, uh, temperature of the, of the, the, the under, what's underneath. I can make it cooler. Usually, make it cooler or or warmer. We use glazing. Uh -huh. We can change without changing the value. We change the temperature of a color. You can oh, also okay. glaze a, a color on on top of the ink. So you don't you while maintain the value, you can make it uh, more like a gray, a warm gray, or cool gray. You know that that kind of uh -huh. yeah. You can you can use a uh, you can use a little brown to glaze on on top of the. You can you can make a you can you can glaze it. You know just to uh -huh. use a yeah just to add a a little thin layer. It's like a glaze. Glaze is a term on pottery. It's like a. Um, Transparent. Transparent. So in other words, uh, Henry, would you use the, um, 
instead of using the um, colors that you can't see through, you mm -hmm. would use the transparent colors. Yeah, you, yeah, that, that's great. Uh, okay. you, when you use opaque color, we call that embed. So I can use opaque color on those uh, uh, dark spots to cover it. We call that embedding. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's embedding and glazing and yeah. Yeah. A lot of different terms. <laughs> um, I, I think usually I don't uh, introduce those techniques uh, isolated from the painting. So when you, when you have, you know, when you study some um, subject matter, it requires embed, I would introduce that term, especially when you paint something very colorful like a peacock we'll use that to make the, the last of the, the green on the, on the fur feather. So we will just uh, embed it, you know, or, or graze it, you can also. Um, so yeah, basically the terminology that is not very important. Just try to understand what you can do. When you try to change the temperature, you, you just, without changing the value, you can glaze it. You, so you see, I just changed the, this this part. You, you can see uh, into a pinkish gray. Um, so now you can see a little color, right? Yeah. Since we're on that subject, may I ask? Um, when I was painting leaves on the cherry blossom mm -hmm. flat or leaves, the the underside, I didn't make a different tone. The top and the bottom look like they're the same tone. If I were to glaze with the light yellow with on the bottom of the flowers, would that make that stand out? Uh, say it again. What, what, uh, what's your question? I didn't get there. I'm sorry. Wait, this would be the Gung B painting with uh -huh. the cherry blossoms. Uh-huh. I know you had answered my question um, as far as being able to do like a light wash. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I can go to the page to see that painting with you. If you I'm trying to make the bottom of the leaf and the top of the leaf different values because I made a mistake and made them all the same. Uh -huh. So okay, I didn't me, know if maybe the yellow glaze would help on the bottom of the leaves. Okay, let me go to the, the page with your painting so we can take a look. Okay, let's try to find. I think it's a lesson 59 still, right? Yeah, I added a new discussion because the other okay. one was getting kind of long. Yeah, let me share the screen so we can go to there. Um, I'm afraid to, to add anything and mess it up. Let me see. Um, what do you mean? So this is the lesson. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, I did. Oh, you logged out? <laughs> Just, uh, um, here is the you, you add a new discussion. Okay. It, it keeps asking me to something privacy change. I have to accept that. Huh? Okay, here's the penny you talked about, right? This, this, uh, which one? This one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you, you're talking about glazing of uh, yellow? The, on the leaves, the underside of the leaves. Oh, I did it I see what different you tones. Uh huh. Um, let me, let me test. Let's do some test. Okay. Let's see, annotate. Yeah. We, we have a spotlight erase. I think we can use uh, straw. Oh, you're going to try to add like some yellow to see what would happen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I could always do that in uh, Procreate. I didn't think to try that. Okay. So, Oh, yeah, this is something you, you mean by adding yellow, right? Yeah, maybe not so much, but... <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, let's, let's try a different. So you want to talk about uh, what? What about some cool? Uh, oh, like the mineral like, green. Yeah, you can make it the. I think not yellow. It, it, it should make it the cooler. Maybe. Would you uh, do that on the back? I'm sorry. Um, I think normally the back is more like this. Remember we did uh, last time with that the flower on uh, the gardenia. Yeah. The the back is usually in this color. The the front is it's uh, more reddish. Yeah. Right. So I I I I think this would be better than the yellow. No, I, I'm sorry. I mean the back of the paper. Um. Oh, you you put on the back of the paper with the yellow. You mean? You try to Should I? That? No, the mineral green. Should I do the mineral green on the back of the paper? Oh, you you could. I think if it's a very thin paper, yeah, you just let it. Uh, it would. Yeah, it would be more subtle if you do that. Um, yeah, I think it. it yeah, you can add to uh, mineral green on the back of the paper to, to achieve this same effect, right? Okay. Yeah, I think that 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 would that would help. Um, Thank you. If, if it, yeah, if not uh, showing enough, you can use very thin glazing. So basically, on the back, we we don't call it glazing. We call it uh, um, just backing. <laughs> backing. Back up or, or uh, usually we use very opaque color, very uh, thick color on, on the back, right? Right. So just flat wash, yeah, flat wash. Oh, okay. Flat. I understand. I could always try that. If it's not enough, just flip it and put the light coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would make it. Uh, um, separate you know separate the two layers so like here you you will have uh, separate these two layers um yeah the front and back yeah this is the back right that's why i yes like like that and i that's think that's helpful. probably it i'm not sure about this one that's the back yeah okay um yeah you don't have to do all the and same, but you have to keep eye on the balance of the whole painting. Let me go back to see if uh, I can go back. Um, this is, uh, oh, here. Okay, cannot find this page. I think I'm in trouble again. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, anyway, I hope uh, not uh, getting cut off. Um, let me see if any chat I need to do. Oh, I to answer is a good question. Okay, yeah, Victoria is typing the, the translation from Google for you. Okay. So I'll put the chat uh, in the recording as well. I'm going to stop the recording.